Gremlins, Beverly Hills Cop, Stripes, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. A random list of 80s comedies? No. It's the filmography of Judge Reinhold. Over Labor Day weekend, I stumbled upon the 1985 film Head Office starring Judge Reinhold on hoax. Head Office was ahead of its time. It sanitized corporate culture, described rising globalization, and featured the destruction of a manufacturing town years before Michael Moore's Roger and Me. It had brilliant performances from the supporting cast including Danny Devil, Rick Moans, and Jane Seymour. This movie should be a cult classic, but it never found an audience. Not then, not now. Why? It starred Judge Reinhold. Judge Reinhold was an incredibly dull, unlikable protagonist in an otherwise brilliant film. Was he miscast? After having viewed this movie more than once, I don't think a better performance by a more charismatic actor could have saved this movie. The character was inherently unlikable. Asterisk he's late to his own graduation. Asterisk he admits to having put no effort into his studies or his career. Asterisk when asked about what he stands for by the female lead and future love interest, he responds with meaningless platitudes in an attempt to get a date. Asterisk he routinely gets promoted, simply because he's a US senator's son. Asterisk his character does nothing for the first 60 minutes to advance the plot, other than flirt with a pretty girl. He was the embodiment of an office golden boy archetype that people love to hate, yet he's the protagonist. How can someone be the hero if he does nothing for most of the story? And that's when it clicked. Office workers make unlikable protagonists because there is little they can realistically do other than advance their own interests. He sees Danny Devil's character hurl himself off a building. He meets the Rick Moans character after he dies from a heart attack. He's in a position to observe the insanity of what is going on around him, but not in a position to do anything about it. At one point, Judge Reinhold's character is put in a public relations department. He's confronted by militant feminists complaining about hair removal cream. They demand it be removed from the market, but go out of their way to demonstrate they are only concerned with leg hair, not armpit hair. They don't want to be confused with the armpit hair protesters, the WACPF Samel the women against corporate promotion of female self-mutilation Marxist feminist. Another group plops the liver of a sperm whale on his desk and starts ranting about how Zionist is fascism. Brilliant writing, biting satire of how consumer advocacy had been co-opted by the radical left, but inaccessible to most audiences. And he does nothing, because there is nothing he can do. At the 60-minute mark, the president of the company rolls some ball bearings down the length of a conference room table. This was his way of selecting an executive for an important task. Instead of reaching out and grabbing them, they simply fall in his lap. This is the movie's call to adventure, and it's another missed opportunity to make the protagonist's story arc compelling. Judge Reinhold's character isn't successful because of his abilities. He has none. The main characters of the movie Thank You for Smoking and the two series Dark and Better Call Saul can talk their way out of any situation. That is their superpower, the gift of gab. Reinhold has no special talents. Instead, he makes a fool of himself by giving a press conference while stoned. In it, he admits that his company is in business to make money, and that's why they are closing down a plant and moving their jobs to some fictional Central American country. It's seen as refreshing honesty by the media. A straight shooter. Instead of getting fired, he once again is promoted. He's succeeding despite his stupidity. The movie had some filler sequences that would have been removed from better movies but were kept in to preserve a 90-minute untie. A better edit would have resulted in a 50-minute movie. I read the original screenplay for the movie Wayne's World had an estimated 40-minute untie. That's why it's able to spend four full minutes showing its characters driving around town in a compact car singing Bohemian Rhapsody. It didn't have much else to say. The first time Reinhold's character does anything noteworthy is when he hits a Central American dictator over the head with a suitcase containing $2 million, but by this point the plot had already gone off the rails. In the end, his love interest turns out to be the daughter of the company's villainous owner. After the owner is sent to jail, Judge Reinhold takes over the company. The end. It's a dumb ending, because there wasn't anywhere to go. They created a setting for a few interesting set pieces for observational humor, satire, and black comedy. However, the reality of being a cog in a large bureaucracy is that there isn't much an individual can do, but a movie needs an ending, something to resolve the conflict and roll credits. And that's why they don't make movies about people like me. We're not heroes. That's not the role we have been cast for. I think some actors who read the script for Head Office quickly realized the main character was dull and unlikable and passed on the part. That's how they got stuck with Judge Reinhold.